it's not my back, it's not my calves or something. It seems to be my chest is this, the newest one. So, um. What's up guys, I'm Walkim. You are watching Fuzzy Fitness. So Ian Valier's chest has been a trending topic since Toronto Pro. And the reason is that people just keep speculating on that. So he himself had to come out and explain some stuff, which I think is great. And props to him for doing that. I don't feel an injury there. I don't have an injury. No injury occurred. Just like with my back, whatever that, you know, conversation that was going on at the time, there was no injury that I was aware of. You know, whether it's therapy work, massage work, or if there is some kind of, you know, dying or off or, you know, lack of blood flow or nerve activation or something in there. Uh, make sure I'm getting whatever work needs to be done. If it's stem cells, massage work, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on there. Now he knows that there is an issue. And according to him, he has seen that at different points in his career in the past. But we can all agree that the gap of his chest this time was much more pronounced compared to previous years. So apparently there isn't an injury or any nerve damage that Ian is aware of. But he will get everything checked out moving forward. And that is the right thing to do. So Ian's hotel room shots taken one day out of the show looked extremely impressive. And yeah, I know how you appear before or after that stage time does not matter. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, we saw the example of Sergio Oliva Jr. And if we just look at the difference of his back double bicep shot on stage versus two weeks before the show, that is just astonishing. So in my opinion, if he jumped into the show without doing any of the peak week protocols, he would have done a lot better. But that's just bodybuilding, guys. Now, some of the bodybuilding fans perceive these issues as nothing but excuses. And that is true only to an extent. Because the thing is, there are literally examples of the greatest genetic gifts to ever step on that bodybuilding stage, but never nail their condition 100% on stage once in their entire careers. Lionel Bayeki and the late Cedric McMillan are some of the examples off the top of my head. And even the greatest bodybuilders of all time miss their peak every once in a while. So coming back to Ian, he isn't planning to do any more shows other than the Olympia this year, like I said in my last video. Because in my opinion, there is just too much pressure now. So we will see him at the Olympia stage in November. Just like I did with my back from the Olympia, you know, it was significantly better there. Um, you know, some things through training, some things through posing, some things through just our peak and the fullness and pop, helping make that back look better. Um, but just like there is there with my chest, there's no injuries that I'm aware of that I, I felt. Maybe I could get an MRI and, and look into that uh, more. Now, what about Sergio Oliva Jr.? So based on how he is eating at the moment, I'm pretty sure he isn't doing Spain. Neither is he doing the Orlando Pro. But whenever he decides to compete next, he has to bring 100% for the fans. Because we all saw the reaction after this California Pro. Just recently, a legend like Flex Wheeler was talking about Sergio's potential and what he can accomplish if he brings the condition. The guy has so much potential, you know, so much potential. We've all watched him from like a little teenager. And I didn't think much of him when I first seen him. I was like, wow, you know, this guy, you know, he's not all that. But just the amount of muscle he put on, man, if he finally gets everything together, you know, it's just going to be amazing. Now, a lot of you guys on my channel tell me that I hype up Sergio way too much. And the argument that you guys give, which, by the way, I totally agree with, is that Sergio hasn't accomplished anything big during his career. Just one pro win in the last five to six years. And I agree, all those statistics are 100% true. But the thing is, I want to see what all these legends of the sport are talking about. Guys like Dennis James, Flex Wheeler, Ford Evan Milos, they all think that Sergio can do so much better than this. So I hope that he comes in the way he is supposed to and earns his Olympia qualification this year. And I think if he does that, he will be able to earn the respect of the bodybuilding community. And that is all I have to say about that. What does he need to do? I think it's just conditioning. And also, I think uh, just from, I don't know him super well, but we've had some conversations, you know, similar like myself, he's his worst enemy. He's always in his own way. He's always in his head. You know what I mean? And so this isn't a physique update, but a training update from the former Mr. Olympia, Brendan Curry. And it kind of feels like that people have already forgotten about him. And a big part of the bodybuilding community believes 
that he isn't gonna be a major factor going into this year's Mr. Olympia. So what do you guys think? Will Brendan Curry drop down even more in his placings? Well, in my opinion, that is the safest bet. And that is just me being honest. Because if we keep it 100% real, Brendan at this point in his career cannot beat Samson Dauda. Especially that version that we saw at this year's Arnold Classic. And that is not me saying that. William Bonac, his former rival, said that in an interview. And William was the one who saw Samson's physique up close at the Arnold Classic stage. So Brandon still has one of the best shapes in men's open, no doubt. But the thing is, he's gonna be 41 in October. So if he tries to come in big, like he did last year, he gets exposed because of the lack of separation. But if he goes for that shredded kind of look, he loses the volume on his legs. So it is gonna be really hard for him to stay in that top four this year. Antoine Williams' physique updates close to 300 pounds look absolutely crazy. Just look how deep those abs are. The off-season push is about to begin. And as you guys already know, Antoine is skipping this year's contest season in pursuit to make some necessary improvements. He looked pretty decent at this past Mr. Olympia, but still he was outside of that top 15. And that just shows us the caliber of competition in the men's open right now. So Antoine has also revealed what show he's gonna do next. And that is the Arnold Classic 2024. James Hollingshead also said the same thing. And he is going with the same plan as Antoine. Skipping this year and coming back better than ever next year. So looking forward to next year's Arnold. It is gonna be an awesome show as always. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.